Hello and welcome in TTN conference. My name is Bartosz Boryna. I'm a member of uh, ST technical support. Uh, I am a member of microcontroller support. And one of my responsibility area, it is uh, LP1 uh, solutions. I will go with you through the hands-on session, how to send data to the LoRaWAN network. It will be based on our new solution, STM32WL system on chip. What are the key learnings of the session? So we will see how ST, together with Semtech, implements uh, LoRaWAN protocol stack. Then I will show you quite key solution of our implementation. It is the sequencer. Uh, which allows to manage in uh, efficient way the low power mode of the application. Because during the session, we will code the class A LoRaWAN endnote. So, as you probably know, the most uh, often state of this LoRaWAN uh, class A uh, node, it is the low power. Then, based on sequencer and low power approach, I will show you LoRaWAN application flow. Uh, you will see it is a typical event-driven application. Then, uh, we'll code, we will practice the uplink and downlink data transmission. So, not only uplink direction, but also downlink messages on application layer. And to do that, uh, we'll use STM32 Cube IDE environment, focusing on the automatic uh, source code generator, so called STM32 Cube MX. I think most of you already know this basic point, but I would like to remind you that LoRaWAN means uh, not only the radio, the LoRaWAN network consists of four layers. It is endpoint and uh, this layer it is uh, the one we will focus today. Then we have gateway which acts as a bit pipe, in fact. A network server which is responsible for network management, uh, for example, selection of, of the best gateway in terms of quality of, of service, quality of link. And then on the top application server for network joining process and uh, it is most important from customer of view to install, to put the end customer application on that. What we will do today? So the plan is to implement, develop the temperature controller in a kind of not typical uh, way because uh, the architecture of, of that controller will be spread one. This is not a practical solution, but from the hands-on point of view, it is very practical because we will implement both directions of communications, both uplink and downlink. So our job will be based on the board provided by ST. It is so-called Nucleo board, Nucleo 64 in particular, and STM32WL on the top. So what, what we have uh, here, uh, we have SMA antenna, the mechanical standard and the electrical standard follows the Arduino standard. So we have Arduino connectors. We have uh, STM32WL. In practice, it is under uh, under metallic shield because of the regulations. We must sell the modules. So here you can see the metallic shield removed, just to give you the, the full overview. Then we have integrated debugger. It is uh, ST-Link version 3, quite practical solution. This ST-Link implements mass storage device so you can just drag and drop the, the binary using uh, windows explorer and, and and flash the micro thanks to that we have four push buttons including reset so we have three user bu user buttons and uh, one reset button then we have uh, three user leds you can supply this board with usb cable or use external power supply 
And for the temperature controller, we need a temperature sensor. Uh, inside the, the uh, STM32 WL, we have temperature sensor. It is junction temperature sensor, in fact, and we can re reuse it. So every period, let's say several seconds, the application will send data to the LoRaWAN network and then application on the top sends back some message. So here you can see the details of, of the temperature sensor. It is connected to the internal ADC multiplexer here. And in order to increase the accuracy of the measurement process, we'll also use the internal voltage reference, which is connected to another channel of the ADC multiplexer. And there is a dedicated macro to, to, to evaluate the temperature in Celsius degrees. So I think um, at this stage uh, there is no need to, to, to focus on so much details, so let's go to the next slide. Some important message for the developers that um, our implementation obviously based on the Semtech protocol stack. So Semtech provides the, the, the protocol stack, both the, the, the higher parts of physical layer and, and MAC layer. And uh, the, the ST implementation based on the LoRaWAN specification 1.0.3. And source code is located under this link, so you can you can find the source code of protocol stack provided by Semtech on GitHub. And the, the, the implementation supports class A, class C, both unicast and multicast, and class B, unicast and multicast. That's regarding the protocol stack and uh, here you can see the overview of the uh, of the implementation so it is so called stm32 cube wl version 1.0.0 so this is the the library pack it consists also a lot of uh, examples for stm32 wl so this package provides two approaches of the of the libraries. It is low layer library and hardware abstraction library. Low layer allows you to to save the MCU resources like flash and 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 RAM memory, but it is much more heavy in terms of the portability. Hardware abstraction layer approach is is really portable one. It, it is easy to to migrate but consumes a little bit more resources. So, as you can see, within the pack there is not only LoRaWAN implementation and, and uh, sub-gigahertz peripheral, but also all the peripherals are supported, like ADC, GPIOs, UARs, etc. Some middlewares are supported, like Artos, FATFS, Security features are strongly supported. This is a very important message for for developers because the security is, is, is really main part of the LoRaWAN solution. We support some 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 boards, not only nuclear boards but also discovery evaluation boards and dedicated boards. There are documents, user manual, related user manual, uh, related application note where you can find details it is you can just put the name of user manual or application note within the search bar of ST web page and you can find the, the links. More details regarding WL as I said it covers it covers not only the, the peripheral support but uh, a set of examples uh, support of different protocols but our hands-on is focused on, on LoRaWAN so let's focus on LoRaWAN examples provided by KubeWL package. So those examples we have three examples uh, Pingpong, EndNote and ATSlave and those examples are migrated from the previous or uh, better to say parallel 
uh, implementation, so-called IQ Plorava. It has been provided a few years uh, ago for, um, let's say, discrete solution. I mean, by discrete, I mean the, the separated uh, transceiver, uh, like, like Semtex, Semtex SX uh, 12, 72, 76, and separated ST microcontroller. So for those who are already familiar with IQ Pluravan, it is a well-known set of the applications. Pingpong, it is the implementation of physical layer only, so it is out of our scope today. We'll focus on EndNode application and implement class A. Uh, so this is our today job. And there is also quite practical solution, ATSLAVE application which implements AT slave uh, driven LoRaWAN modem. So there is also middleware, uh, so the protocol stack uh, implementation provided by uh, Semtech Mac layer, physical layer, utilities uh, like uh, sequencer implementation, I will provide more details later on, software timers, uh, trace unit, etc. And those utilities are common with uh, the, the another system on chip from ST, STM32WB. And then BSP, because we have particular board, so considering particular board, for example, we have RF switch connected to particular GPIO, so we need to support we need to provide board support package. And again, the details of KubeWL can be found in related user manual. What is the folder structure of the of the EndNote examples we will focus today? So in fact, from the from the user, from the developer point of view, it is quite simple because we'll uh, there is a need to modify lora underscore app.c file in order to, to implement application user application layer of EndNote. So this is our file to be modified, located within the LoRaWAN folder and the app subfolder. Then we have core folder, so MCU specific files, for example, the main.c, the implementation of the particular peripherals. Then we have drivers, so BSP for the board support package, CMCs, because we are using uh, STM32WL, it is Cortex M4, M0, and uh, HAL drivers. So hardware abstraction layer drivers for the peripherals. Then we have part provided both by Semtech and ST, so uh, Mac layer implementation. So this is Semtech and then we have a LoRa finite state machine. So let's say lower application layer state machine of the of the uh, end node. And this is provided by ST and this is, I would say, added value you can get from ST because the finite state machine of LoRaWAN is already pre-certified. So if you would use, uh, reuse the ST solution, the probability of the successful certification process is, is, is very high. And this finite state machine provides both uh, regular mode, regular operation of the uh, LoRaWAN end node and the test mode needed for the certifications. And also within the middleware, we have support for uh, security and crypto and, and some utilities. Then we have uh, sub gigahertz physical layer, it is, it is also part provided by Semtech and combined with ST implementations and utilities like low power manager, sequencer, software timers, trace, system time. So more details on the following slides. Let's start from the, from the physical layer. So the direction of my explanation, it's from, from the bottom to the, to the top. Uh, in terms of the of the layers of the protocol stack, so on the on the bottom we have hardware, we have transceiver, and uh, dedicated 
library for that. Uh, it is a part of hardware abstraction layer uh, provided by ST, and this is sub gigahertz hull. So really atomic functions to handle the transceiver. Then we have part provided by, by Semtech. This is the physical layer. And the hull layer implements interface to the uh, radio driver. So this is, let's say, lower layer of physical layer. And this radio driver, this split is, is implemented in order to interface to any radio driver. So thanks to this architecture, you can easily exchange the transceiver on the bottom. Then we have higher uh, layer of the physical layer. It is radio interface, which provides, uh, provides APIs to the higher layer, the, the MAC layer. Here you can see more details regarding the API of the higher layer of physical layer, so radio interface. So as you can see, you have a set of the functions to perform some basic operations like radio init, radio get status, radio send, radio rx or radio receive, etc. And this, this interface is used by MAC layer medium access layer. So again, to highlight the slide regarding the split between the layers of the physical layer, so we have two sub-layers, lower and higher. Radio low-level functions are located in radio driver, so interface with HAL sub-gigahertz atomic services and interface with VSP services. And then we have radio physical layer high level, uh, so it is radio.c. And this is the interface with higher levels of the protocol stack. By higher levels, I mean, ju I mean just a MAC medium access control layer. And here you can see the example how to configure the transceiver, the application, what is the sequence of the operations in order to send data using physical layer only, uh, using radio interface. So. As you can see, as a first step, it is the implementation of some callbacks. This is very important. This is, it is first time you can see this, this, this mechanism. As uh, you will see, the application is even driver. So uh, we need to have some methods. And the equivalent of the method for the low layer programming, for the embedded programming, it is the, the callback. The callback is just a, a pointer to the particular function from C code point, point of view. So we have callbacks like on txdan. So this callback will be triggered after successful uh, transmission uh, on rxdan. So af this callback will be called after a successful uh, reception, etc. Some timeouts callback, some errors callback. Then we are configuring the transceiver parameters like uh, modulation type output power, bandwidth, etc. Then we are selecting channel and sending data. And the same sequence for the reception. Again, callbacks, parameterization of the transceiver, selection of the channel and starting the reception mode with timeout value. What about uh, STM32WL transceiver itself? I mean the atomic operations on the transceiver. This transceiver is connected internally to the core, to the system, to the rest of the system on chip through the internal SPI interface. And this, uh, the pins of this interface are not exposed externally. And the HAL library provides the functions to set and get some comments to and from the transceiver and here you can see the comments uh, set some really basic operations like entering the sleep uh, calibration uh, uh, transmission reception and we have opcodes uh, assigned to the commands there is a dedicated function we need to put as a, as a parameter, we need to put the opcode, we need to put the buffer to receive the response from the transceiver and we need to send some data to transceiver, some, let's say, uh, the body of the command.
So this is the, the atomic operation, set command, and we can define some little bit higher level, for example, to make the code more readable. For example, we can implement function sub gigahertz set sleep, and within this function uh, body, we are switching off the antenna to avoid additional current consumption, and we are sending the radio set sleep command. In fact, this is the same approach, but in the opposite direction. So the get command direction. So for example, we can get the status of the transceiver. We can get the received signal strength indicator. And below the SPI level, we have really basic level, the lowest level, the lowest la layer of the abstraction. It is, it is just a set of the registers to control the, the transceiver. We will use particular boards. It is Nucleo STM32WL55JC1 board. This board is populated with dual core version of the WL system on chip. It consists Cortex M0 Plus core and Cortex M4. But in order to simplify the flow of the hands on, we'll implement single core application. So we will use only Cortex M4 application. So we have particular board and we need to implement some board related functions within the BSP library. So for example, configuration of the antenna switch, configuration of the TCXO, because also TCXO is connected to particular pin in order to control the, the, the power supply of the TCXO. We have SMPS power supply, so we can use SMPS mode of the uh, WL system on chip, or we can use linear regulator. So that's why the BSP package is needed. More details regarding the utilities. The utilities are quite important uh, for the applications. So let's start from the trace utility. So we implement the DMA trace in order to log the application behavior. And the output for the trace, it is the UART. And on our board, this UART is connected to the virtual COM port of the onboard uh, debugger. Uh, so it means in practice that you can just use terminal on your PC uh, in order to follow the, the, the log of the application, the trace of the application. And what does it mean, DMA trace? It means that the implementation of the trace is not blocking one because of the DMA. Uh, so we can print the data in real time, not affecting the radio operation. And the trace feature is really important one in case of the problems, of any problems, because I think most of the cases you would face some problems with uh, the protocol stack with the application in, in, in general. Our technical support will ask for the trace. Then low power manager. So as uh, we are implementing uh, now the uh, class A, mode. Most of the time uh, the, the class 8 node is uh, in low power mode and the low power manager is a software part which centralizes the low power requirements for the model in order to select the appropriate uh, the low power mode. For example, when trace is active, we are printing something, we shall not go in stop mode because Otherwise, the trace would stop. So this low power manager somehow unloads the developer from the uh, from this task. The sequencer, it is kind of the framework uh, to safely go in low power mode. It also somehow unloads the developer from this task. The sequencer is really the the, the backbone of the application and it records uh, and manages the tasks and events, but it is not a real-time operation system. It is much more simple in order to save the resources, but we have also tasks and events. Then timer. This is the software timer implementation. And you, you could ask why we have provided such a solution. It is true we have a lot of timers on our WL system on chip, hardware timers, but the main reason for that is the low power approach. The lowest consumption we can get 
for the timer, time base, it is the RTC module and in our, our particular the alarms of the RTC module and we can use the alarms of RTC module just the power consumption, current consumption is the lowest one we can reuse the RTC alarms as a time base for software timer and software timer and timers in general it, it is a key point uh, in terms of the LoRaWAN and node application flow control because we have a lot of timings like reception windows like delays in between windows then we have a few more files like memory operations, system time, uh, low footprint, scan F, low footprint, printf, hex, some con hex conversions, so comp just companion utilities. Okay, so we have the bricks and now we can start to implement the application, but before I will provide you details regarding ST implementation. The application is event driven and in particular time driven because time event is also kind of event, could be regular. And the behavior of the system can be triggered for such an event and this event can be a timer or radio event. By radio event I mean the, the interrupt from the transceiver like end of reception or end of transmission, some errors, etc. So what is the flow? After reset, we need to initialize the, the microcontroller, the libraries, the LoRaWAN protocol stack. Then application sends the join request to join the network, so it is transmission. Then enters low power mode and waits for the event. And this event can be joint accept, for example, or can be some regular event from the timer. On this slide, you can see this process providing more details. I skip the MCO initialization, it is obvious. So after LoRaWAN initialization, we need to register the tasks to the sequencer and we need to init the LM handler. The LM handler, it is the main API of the LoRaWAN process on node side. It is the it is it is the part implemented by ST and it is pre-certified. So I I will provide you more details about that. And because we have sequencer, we need to register the tasks of the sequencer. And we have two tasks in our case. So the LM handler package process. So this is the main process of the node. It is just LoRaWAN process, LoRaWAN protocol stack process, and we have process to send data. So after registration of the task, the application calls the relevant handler to send join request. Then after successful joining to the network, the callback on, on join request is called and now the application is aware that it is joined to the network. Then after joining, after successful joining, the TX timer starts. TX timer triggers periodically and this event, it is just a callback in our implementation on TX timer event and the period of TX timer, it is the APP TX duty cycle. It will be 15 seconds in our case and within this callback, we are increasing the priority of the send TX data task. So for the sequencer, it means that the sequencer must execute this task once, only once, and then go to low power again. After sending data, which is triggered by timer, the callback is triggered on TX data, of course, after successful sending data, and the LED blinks to confirm TX. And then, because we have up and down link implemented, the reception window opens and after reception of the data, callback on Eric's data is, is triggered, is called. And on the bottom, we have LoRa physical layer and, and LoRa Mac. I know it looks quite complex at first touch, but you will see from the, from the developer point of view, the, the implementation is quite simple the LM Handler API. So what is LM Handler? This is the interface between LoRa Mac, so medium access layer, and the application layer of the user. So it is kind of intermediate layer, or we can also, also call it as a lower 
application layer because it implements the finite state machine of the Laravan endnote. From developer point of view, it provides API to perform the Laravan actions like LM handler send, so send data to the network, LM handler join, request to join to the network. We can change the class of the endnote. We can set enable or disable automatic data rate feature of the protocol stack. We can set device EUI, etc., etc. So the basic API for the application layer of the endnote. Again, even driven approach. So we have set of callbacks like get battery level, get temperature level on Mac process Mac notified. This is really the basic one callback because this callback follows every event provided by Mac layer of the protocol stack on join request on TX data on uh, Eric data. So here you can see the implementation of the particular callback. Uh, it is the TX timer callback. Just to remind you, we have TX timer, which triggers periodically the uh, sending data process to the network. And this is the implementation. So inside, uh, you can see the, the only two functions. The first function increase the priority of the LoRa send on TX process. and this informs the sequencer to execute only once the send TX data function. And we are starting the timer because the timer is uh, in one shot mode. Before entering the main loop, we need to register the tasks. I already mentioned this on this slide. So here, register sequencer task, LM handler package process and send TX data process. So this is the detailed implementation. So we need to register the task uh, LM handler process. So this is the main process of the LoRaWAN endnote. I mean the protocol stack process and the user task sent TX data. And within the main.c, the, the main.c, the main loop is very simple one because we are calling only the process, the main process function. This function mx loravan process is located within app loravan.c and the implementation of this function is also very simple because as you can see we are running the sequencer that's all so in fact in main loop we are running the sequencer I mentioned a few times that the most often state of the loravan endnote class A application is uh, low power state and this is the implementation because the application flow is controlled by a sequencer. After increasing the, the priority of the task, sequencer executes the task only once and then enters idle task. And it is up to the user to implement the action inside the idle task. And in our case, it will be just entering the low power mode. Okay, some generic feature of the sub gigahertz band, RF duty cycle limitation. Please do not mix the application duty cycle, so the period of the TX timer, with the RF duty cycle limitation. So RF duty cycle limitation controls the sub gigahertz, below one gigahertz band occupation. And according to the European regulation, the duty cycle, the RF duty cycle limitation is 1%. It means that considering the period of the integration of the duty cycle limitation, which is one hour, so 3,600 seconds, and considering the duty cycle limitation, 1%, it means that we can continuously transmit data for 36 seconds because of one hour integration period. And LoRaWAN protocol stack automatically handles the RF duty cycle feature. So there is no need to take care about. There is dedicated define inside the region related file, the header file, so the duty cycle is enabled. We have also dedicated LM handler API, set LM handler set duty cycle enable. But considering the practical point of view, during the development process. It is really practical, believe me, 
to disable the duty cycle control, automatic control uh, feature, because during development, the node transmits quite often data in order to speed up the development process. And it is practical solution to disable the duty cycle limitation, obviously for the certification and for the end product, for the target product, the duty cycle limitation feature must be enabled, must be active. Finally, we can start coding. We have the bricks, we know the expected application flow, so we can start practical part. And uh, because we are limited in time, we will use pre-configured CubeMX project. So the application, uh, the, the graphical tool will be already pre-configured. So let me start CubeIDE. This is the STM32 CubeID environment. It is free tool, it is Eclipse based, and uh, it is uh, based on GCC compiler. Uh, my version, it is, uh, it is 1.5.1. This is the current version of the environment. And I will start from the pre-configured file. So new STM32 project from an existing STM32 cube mx configuration file. It will take some time. Okay, so we have dialog window, so let's browse for the uh, file here, loravan endnotes.ioc, open then I will use my uh, proprietary location uh, for the project. Mm. Okay, so that's all I think. Now uh, the embedded tool uh, is starting, it is uh, STM32 CubeMX, so this tool is uh, very practical because it uh, allows you to uh, configure your mic microcontroller uh, in graphical way, as you can see, for example, here there is a pinout view, and then generate uh, the, the, the the source code, the project. Uh, as I told you, uh, the, the project is already pre-configured, um, so we have some pins already active. We have clock tree uh, configuration ready. The, the microcontroller clock is set to the maximum 148 megahertz. Uh, then uh, um, we have some par peripherals, uh, subsets, and middleware. And this middleware, it is the point uh, interesting for us. So LoRaWAN protocol stack. I will change the view a little bit. And we have uh, here some tabs. For example, uh, LoRaWAN application tab. And let's modify something. Let's modify transmission duty cycle. By default, we have uh, 10,000 milliseconds. Let's modify it to 15,000. Uh, so this duty cycle is the it is the duty cycle of uh, software timer which triggers the transmission to the network uplink direction. Uh, so. After this modification, we have uh, that the uplink uh, will be sent every 15 seconds. Then let's uh, let's modify some middleware. Okay, here you can see the regions. We are uh, at least my site. I'm located in Europe. So the support for the Europe region, it is enough for me. So I can disable the USA 
region. Here you can see some uh, BSP uh, parameters, but uh, will not touch it. So let's keep the settings uh, as they are now, and we can generate project. Okay, so we have uh, the, the main file is, is open, but uh, as I mentioned on the on the previous slides, we need to modify, in fact, uh, the app underscore dot c application. This is the main application uh, layer uh, source code file. So I can even close the the main dot c here. And uh, the source code generated by CubeMX consists of some sections, like, for example, this one. The section starts with the keywords user code begin something and ends with user code end something. And it is very important to, for the developer to put the source code uh, inside uh, such as sections otherwise during the regeneration of the uh, of the of the source code uh, the, the the code outside the sections will be del deleted okay so what is the first step uh, i plan to use some uh, some some data format conversion from uh, from from integer to the to the ascii uh, so we will use uh, printf uh, function uh, and for that we need to include the standard io header file and as you can see i put it inside the inside the section I will save. Then a uh, practical uh, approach, uh, the duty cycle control fe feature of the protocol stack, as you remember from previous slide. Let's disable uh, the duty cycle control. Uh, and where we can do it, let's go down and uh, try to find some uh, initialization of LoRaWAN because uh, it is the initialization stage of protocol stack. Here, you, you, for example, you can see LM handler init, uh, LM handler configure, uh, some timers, software timer start, join request, and here there is a dedicated section user code begin, LoRaWAN init last. So we can disable the duty cycle limitation inside the section. And save again. OK, what's next? The next point is to modify the send function. So we need to implement the application layer of the sending data uh, to the network. And we, here you, you can see the, the relevant function. And because we have used the pre-configured project, uh, example project, uh, the CubeMX generated some quite complex body of the send function. And my goal uh, is to show you the simplicity of the application layer. So I would like to overwrite uh, the, the previously generated send function body with much more simple one. So I will do that. I will copy the 
most simple version and overwrite it. And save. So as, as you can see, we have only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. And uh, now I will provide you uh, the explanation on that. So let's come back to the slides. So here we included uh, standard I.O., header, uh, disable the duty cycle. And here it is the new version, more simple one version, and most simple one, I would say, as well, of the TX data. And here you can see the explanation of the particular lines. So inside the first line, we need to define the variable to store the temperature, because we need to send the temperature to the network. Then we are defining the variable next takes in. It is optional step. This variable stores the delay to the next transmission in case when the duty cycle limitation would be exceeded. But we disable the duty cycle, the error duty cycle control feature, so we will not use this variable. I will show you close to the end of the hands-on how it behaves uh, in practice. Then we need to call the function sysget temperature level to get the temperature and store the temperature uh, in relevant uh, variable. And then, in fact, we have three lines which are strongly LoRaWAN related. So this is the core of the function. We need to assign the port number, so the first action. The second action is to fill the TX buffer with the data. Uh, up data uh, dot buffer size and fill the buffer size data. And for that we will use uh, s and print f function uh, because the data is uh, in the uh, integer format and we need have, uh, ASCII data because of the of the application on the top of the application server. So s and print function, it is the safe version of s print function. Uh, we have uh, three parameters instead of two. So the buffer for the data, size of the buffer in order to avoid stack overflow, and the variable to be converted. And then we are calling the LM handler API, LM handler send, to send data to the to the network. So here are the data, port number, buffer size uh, to be sent. Here uh, there, uh, there is a parameter to inform the protocol stack if we need confirmation. And here the LM handler returns the time which Mac layer needs to wait for the next transmission. In our case it will be always zero because the RF duty cycle is disabled. And as an option, we can log the RF duty cycle exit uh, event. I think it provides more explanation on that variable. So if next takes in is uh, greater than zero, so we are logging next TX event in something, something seconds. The variable, the time is returned in milliseconds. That's why we need to uh, divide by 1000. This is the optional slide because we can modify not always the number of channels or by default the number of channels is 16. We can change this value but we'll skip this point. So after the modification uh, we just done, the, our application is ready to send data. So we could finish here but as I mentioned in the beginning we need to implement uplink and downlink direction so now it's a time to implement Rx process. Uh, so let's come back to the to the source code and here is a function uh, generated by the cube mix 
and it is also kind of uh, a little bit complex so i decided to overwrite it with the most simple more simple maybe not most simple in this case more simple implementation uh, so i will do it now Okay. And I will come back to slides to explain what is behind. So, as a first action, I'm switching on the blue LED to inform the user the, about the reception event. Then I need to start the software timer of the uh, of this Eric uh, LED in order to because I need to blink it not to to switch on it uh, continuously. Then uh, I need to validate the port number because as as you remember, I, I assign port number two to the relevant data structure, and then is a time to analyze the received buffer, the received payload. It is very simple because the payload length is is one. So we received only one byte, and maybe I will show you on the source code. So if I receive uh, the letter I, so it means that the temperature must be increased. The letter D decreased the temperature. The letter E equalized the temperature, so the temperature is as expected. And if the letter is different, if the byte is different, then the received data are inconsistent. So now we can build the application. Okay, so the application is just built. And uh, as you can see, we have still resources to be used. Only 24% of RAM is occupied and only 41% of flash is occupied. Mm, there is one warning. Let's see what, what happens. Uh, okay, uh, not used variable, so we can comment it out and build again. And now it is a time to flash the binary to the board. I connected the nuclear board to my USB cable and I can flash the application. Okay, okay, I need to update the firmware. I'm upgrading the, the firmware of the ST Link. It may happen on, on your site as well. Then I will close this window reconnect the board and I can start the back process okay so the board is flashed then let's close the debugger view and connect terminal to the board so what uh, should I do now? I need to change the serial port data rate to the 115 kilobits per second and then I can press reset. Okay, you can see application just started and sent the join request. The the nodes just join to the network and the temperature on my table is 18 degrees so quite cold uh, I would say and this application and node send those data and receive some downlink as you can see here increase the temperature so the send temperature is lower than the threshold for sure and data uh, and it sends data every every 15 seconds so maybe i will provide you more details about higher layers about the infrastructure i have used
So in this hands-on, uh, I'm using the Multitech conduit. It is practical solution for at least for me because I have all the layers of the of the LoRaWAN infrastructure in one blue box. So gateway here, network server and application server, and also the um, higher application layer of the user. Uh, I mean the no thread application on the top. So I can design, I can develop very simple flow on the top of the node thread and implement the functionality of the application. And also, due to practical reasons, there is no need for commissioning for each new joining node. Now the workshops are remote. During such a hands-on, if we have a lot of attendees, it is just a practical approach to implement the application layer without the need to commissioning each new joining node. Of course, the application key is, uh, is the same for the, all the attendees. We have also the equivalent of this solution on the Pinoc Lora gateway, but this is not the scope of today's session. This is the configuration of the Multitech Conduit. So, so we have some physical layer configuration, some application server configuration, uh, like application key uh, UI. And this is the flow. This is the flow which is populated on the top of the application server uh, using no thread. So we have the reception block. Uh, LoRa RX. Then we are comparing the receive temperature with the threshold, and then following the result of the comparison, the flow performs to actions increase, decrease, and equal, and all all those actions are uh, connected to the LoRa TX block. Uh, the, the green one blocks are uh, for debug purpose only. The flow is a really simple one and consists of five six blocks. Okay, this is the configuration of the terminal, so we already tested this. Uh, this is the screenshot from the terminal for the regular operation, so sending data, receiving the, the downlink from the application server. And this is quite interesting, I hope, because this is the application behavior when duty cycle is enabled. So the step number seven of the uh, send takes data function. When duty cycle is exceed, here, the Mac layer reports, the duty cycle control feature reports that the next takes in is possible in 84 seconds in front of the 1% of the duty cycle, RF duty cycle limitation. Then during next attempt to sending data, the needed delay is, is lower, 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 lower. And, and finally, the, the protocol stack is capable to send data. The current consumption of the end node of the WL during the LoRaWAN operation. So we can use quite expensive equipment, as you can see on the slide. But we have cost-effective solution for that. It is our uh, X Nucleo LPM01, so-called power shield. The bandwidth is 100 kilohertz, 3.2 mega samples uh, per second sampling rate. The current range is from the 100 nanoamps up to 50 milliamps. And I will use uh, this tool now to show you the current consumption. Some modification, hardware modification is needed on the nuclear board in order to avoid parasitic leakage current flow. Just one uh, solder bridge removal, SB1, here. And because this power shield, in fact, acts as a digitally controlled power supply with embedded uh, multimeter, we need to connect this power supply to the nuclear board. And this is the connection. Here you, uh, you can see the details how to remove the SB1 the solder bridge. And this is the screenshot of the join uh, process uh, of the current consumption during join process. So transmission stage, then five, five seconds delay and reception of join accept. Here is the regular operation. So TX stage, one second delay, one second window and then uh, one second delay and then reception window. And this is the current consumption in low power mode. 
uh, for particular conditions. So uh, here we have STM32WL dual core, RTC is active and RTC is driven by external low speed oscillator, 32 kilohertz. So as you can see, it is about 1.7 microamp. I will show you live how it is working. This is the software for the power shield. I'm selecting, I just connected uh, my hardware. I'm selecting the board, taking control. And now I need to configure the parameters of power shield. So let's set the, the highest sampling frequency. Let's set I don't know, one, 100 seconds acquisition time and power supply voltage 3.3 .3 volts. And I can start acquisition. So now joining process is taking place. And uh, here you can see uh, some square wave because the, the implementation, uh, due to practical reason, we have uh, we added uh, red LED blinking during joining process. And in fact, you can observe the current of a red LED. For the slide uh, I just show you here, this uh, red LED uh, has been removed. That's why uh, there is no square, square wave. But for the regular operation, uh, there is no LED blinking, so I can stop the acquisition. So joining process here and then uh, regular operation here. Uh, we have 15 seconds. Maybe I can magnify the, this area, the, the regular operation part. So TX, then one second delay, then reception window. Uh, maybe I can open, I can magnify the low power state. So again, and I can show you the uh, report. And again, the, the current consumption is, is, is about 1.7 microamp, as you have seen on the, on the slide. So, in my opinion, practical uh, solution. And not so expensive. Okay, let's come back to the slides. We are close to the end of the hands-on. Uh, maybe some generic information about the certification. The target of the LoRaWAN certification is to ensure the interoperability and compliance of on any LoRaWAN network. There are some optional extended RF tests like total radiated power, total isotropic uh, sensitivity. Some of the network service providers uh, need uh, such a test. From marketing point of view, you can get the LoRaWAN certified logo after successful certification. Uh, in order to start the certification, the device manufacturer must be a member of LoRa Alliance. Uh, uh, currently, the certification program is for Class A devices. This is important, uh, so the regulatory testing C, FCC can take place before, after or, or at the same time, but usually the test house is capable to provide such a test or in parallel with the LoRaWAN certification. And the process details are described, including quite useful uh, frequently asked ask question section on LoRa Alliance web page. Okay, so this is the end of the hands-on. Uh, thanks a lot for your participation.